الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئیات اعمالنا من یحده اللہ فلا مدل له و من یدلله فلا حادی له و نشد ان سیدنا و سندنا و شفیعنا محمد عبده و رسوله قال اللہ تبار و تعالی فی القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم انما التوبت علی اللذین للذین یعملون السوء بجہالت ثم یتوبون من قریب فاولائک یتوب اللہ علیہم وکان اللہ علیما حکیما سبحان ربک رب العزت عما یصفون و سلام علی المرسلین والحمدللہ رب العالمین My dear respected brothers, elders and sisters, as you know, the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak, it is just around the corner. This month compared to the rest of the months, in the eyes of Allah Rabbul Izzat has no competition, no month in the whole year, as far as virtue, and the closeness of Allah Rabbul Izzat has, is concerned has no competition with the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. This is a month where the mercy of Allah Rabbul Izzat unequivocally it descends from the sky. And you can see this mercy of Allah Rabbul Izzah, everyone can see some aspect of this mercy in their life. You can see your life change a bit, your routine change a bit in the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. Compared to the other months, we see that we start to frequent the masjid. We see it becomes a bit more easy for us to render the glorious Quran and to do some dhikr. This is a result of that apparent mercy of Allah Rabbul Izzah. It is the result of that apparent mercy that it becomes easy for us to come. We see the whole year, maybe we are not that frequent. We do not visit that, the masjid that frequently. There's a big gap, but in the month of Ramadan, Mubarak, Allah gives us the tawfiq to come 30, 30 days. We see, maybe it is hard for a person to perform Salatul Isha in the masjid in congregation, but in the month of Ramadan, Mubarak, Allah makes it easy for that muqtadi, for that musalli, for that believer to perform 20 rakat tarawih. How is this possible? This is a direct effect of Allah Rabbul Izzat's mercy. Direct effect. That Allah Rabbul Izzat has imprisoned the shaitan. The only enemy that we have to look after or be diligent or be cautious or be considerate about, it is the nafs. The apparent shaitan who only can influence a person, he has been trapped. Jannat is beautified. The volume, the magnitude of mercy has become equivalent. There's no competition. We see Allah Rabbul Izzat in the month of Ramadan and Mubarak where you perform one nafal prayer. Allah increases the reward to 70 farz. Now we are not going to go into this debate or this discussion. What is the reward of Salah? The reward of doing sajda is greater than the dunya and whatever the dunya possesses. Sajda, forget about complete Salah. So a person performs one nafal, the, the reward increases to, is multiplied by 70 farz. But before the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak comes, we are duty bound to do something. If we want to benefit from the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak, if we want to reap the fruits of Ramadan al-Mubarak, if we want Allah Rabbul Izzat to show His mercy upon us, there is something we have to do before the month of Ramadan and Mubarak starts. This is a condition of qualifying for the mercy of Allah Rabbul Izzat. The month of Ramadan and Mubarak, we think it is a month of Tarawi, 
we think that the month of Ramadan al Mubarak is the month of fasting. We think it's the month of the Quran, but it is much greater than this. Rendering the glorious Quran, fasting, performing tarawih, these are all symbols of one thing. These are all signs of one thing. What is that? Allah says, look, there's 12 months in a year. 11 months are yours. But this month of Ramadan and Barak is mine. These are the words of Allah. The month of Ramadan is mine. The rest of the 11 months are yours. You will make mistakes. Allah Rabbul Izzat has created us weak. We are not perfect. We will make mistakes. But in this verse of the glorious Quran, Allah Rabbul Izzat mentions that when a believer makes a mistake, what his, what his attitude, attitude should be afterwards. After making a mistake, what should a person's attitude be? Allah mentions, mentions it in the glorious Quran. Allah has given us the formula that if we do mistake, it's not a big thing. Making a mistake is not a big thing because we are not ma'asumeen. We are not fallible. Imam Ghazali rahmatullah in his Ahya'ul Aloom, he mentions as far as sin is concerned, there are three categories of people. There are three groups of people. One are the ma'asumeen that do not make mistake at all. They are the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam and the angels. They do not make no mistakes. Then there's a, then the second group of people, the second level, it is of the shayateen. It is those people that make mistakes and then are diligent and persistent. And when they are warned, they still don't do tawbah. They are the shayateen. We see some people, they've gone so far that it is even hard for them to think about doing good now. And the Prophet has mentioned the reason, reason of this. The Prophet there's a heart, there's an there's a organ in your body. If that, bod, if that organ is sound, if that organ is healthy, if that organ is functioning correctly, the whole body functions correctly, the whole body works sound. But if that organ it is corrupt. If that organ is not functioning properly, then the whole body does not function properly. Then the whole body becomes sick. Allah wahi al kalb. Then the process are referred to the heart. This is a month to inculcate the greatness, the love of Allah Rabbul Izzat. This heart, this is an organ in the body. And it is empty. When Allah places us in this dunya, the heart is empty. There's a vacuum. It is up to us what we fill this vacuum with. It is up to us. What can you fill this vacuum with? Yes, Allah Rabbul Izzat has given us his recognition in the world of spirits. So it is not that Allah Rabbul Izzat has left us blind, unaware of his greatness, his beauty. The hikmah of giving tahniq when a child is born, what is the hikmah? Why do we do tahniq? Whatever amal, whatever sunnah there is, there is some significance. Sometimes Allah Rabbul Izzat, He gives us the wisdom and we understand the logic behind the sunnah. And sometimes Allah Rabbul Izzat keeps it concealed. It's not necessary to understand everything. Because iman is a test, you don't have to understand everything. If you had to understand everything, then there was no test. The test is something we will have to believe in, regardless of us liking it or not understanding it. What is the hikmah of tahniq? Why do we play something sweet? Why do we give adhan in the baby's ear when he is born? Why do we give the baby something sweet to eat? On the face value, this looks strange. What does the baby know about Adhan? What does the baby know? He has no sense of taste. We are giving him something sweet. What is the hikmah behind this? What is the logic behind this? What is the reason behind this? The reason is 
that in the world of spirits, Allah Rabbul Izzat placed His love, His identity in our hearts. Remember, you can never forget God, Allahu Akbar. The biggest rahma of Allah, the biggest mercy of Allah, it is you can never forget Him. As much as you want to forget Allah, you cannot forget Him. As much as you want to distance Allah from your life, you cannot distance Allah from your life. Because He is in your heart. There is a place in your heart where Allah has placed His identity. If you want to remove, you cannot remove. What is it that a person, he commits sin all his life, but then towards the end of his life, he turns to Allah. Why? Who has compelled him to turn? Keep on committing your sin. No one is grabbing you by the hand. No one has got the hand in your throat. Why are you turning to Allah? You are turning to Allah because Allah has given you his identity. Allah has given you his love. You recognize Allah. You know there's something bigger than the dunya. You know there's something bigger than your own life. You know there's something bigger than your family. That's why you're turning to Allah. As much as you want to forget Allah, you cannot forget. We see the owl, they start, they turn to Allah. When, when a person starts growing old, we see that his inclination, his, inc his inclination changes. He starts to become more pious and righteous. Why? Who is making him pious and righteous? Where is this inclination coming from? It's coming from the heart, my dear respected brothers. The hikmah of tahniq, it is nothing but Allah is saying, this is an entree for you, this sweet. You recognize me. You recognize me, this is an ensuite, the sweet which your the sweet which a pious or righteous person places in the mouth of a baby. Yes, this sweet. Allah is giving the message to this baby. What is the message? The message is this is an entree. If you live a life of obedience in this dunya, there's Jannah waiting for you. This is nothing compared to the bounties of Jannah. And the time you are going to live in this dunya, it is the time between Adhan and Iqama. A very small period of time, 50, 60 years. So don't get caught up in the dunya. It is better we turn to Allah before we return to Allah. Allahu Akbar. It is better we turn to Allah before we are compelled to return to Allah. That's why the month of Ramadan and Mubarak comes. It is a sign that Allah Rabbul Izzat loves us. And how should we pay back Allah Rabbul Izzat? We should pay back. You cannot pay back Allah Rabbul Izzat. Allah is kareem. Allah does not need us. He is kareem. He gives us with us, us without us qualifying for anything. He gives us without us qualifying for everything. If we are to qualify for the bounties Allah Rabbul Izzat has given us, we would not qualify for one glass of water. If there was any significance of the dunya in the eyes of Allah Rabbul Izzat, He would not give one sip of water to the disbelievers. If there was any significance of the dunya. But in the eyes of Allah Rabbul Izzat, there is no significance. He gives in abundance. You see the non-Muslims have more than the Muslims. Because our picture, our concept is much greater than this dunya. For the believers, this dunya, it is a prison. And for the disbelievers, it is for the disbelievers, it is Jannah. Why is it a prison for the believers? It is a prison for the believers compared to the bounties of Jannah. And it is Jannah for the disbelievers compared to the torment, the punishment, the torture of Jahannam. It is Jannah. Allah Rabbul Izzat in the glorious Quran, He says, Allah accepts, this is, in depth, this is the indefinite principle of Tawbah. We have to do Tawbah before the month of Ramadan and Mubarak comes. There are conditions of Tawbah. There are requirements of Tawbah. There is a procedure of Tawbah. Before the month of Ramadan comes, we have to do Tawbah. And be sincere to Allah Rabbul Izzat. Hassan Basri, radiyallahu an, he says, our istighfar needs istighfar. And this is Hassan Basri. And how many times have I said this? Hassan e Basri is that person, that Tabi'i, who was raised in the lap of the Prophet's wife, Umm Salma. And when he used to enter the Jamia Masjid of Kufa, Sayyidina Ali, Karramallahu Waj, he used to descend from the pulpit and he used to say to Sayyidina Hassan e Basri, You sit here today, I will listen to you. This is the maqam and the station of Hassan e Basri. 
such a high maqam in the eyes of the Sahaba as well. Hassan Basri says, our istighfar, our tawbah needs tawbah. Why? Because we do not consider the adab of tawbah when we are doing tawbah and istighfar. Imam Qurtabi in his tafsir, when he mentions this statement of Hassan Basri, he says, this was in his time that our istighfar and our tawbah needs tawbah. In this time, our tawbah is a mukri. It is a joke. We are zalim in our nature. We are oppressors in our nature. We are greedy for the dunya. We have the tasbih in our hand and we are doing istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. We are mukin Allah Rabbul Izzat. This is kufr. That's why when we do tawbah, we should be sincere with Allah Rabbul Izzat. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Atta'ibu Habibullah. The person who does tawbah is the friend of Allah. This is a mud to befriend Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Atta'ibu min azzam kaman la dhambalah. A person who repents from his sins, it is like that person who has not committed a sin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kullu bani Adam khatta'oon. That all Bani Adam, the children of Bani Adam, how comforting are these hadiths? That Allah does not accept us, expect us to be ma'asumin. Allah knows we will not be infallible. He knows we will make mistakes. But khayrul hatta'in at-tawwabun, the best person is he who after making a mistake does tawbah. That's why the process I mentioned the criteria, I'll mention the criteria, I'm very short on time. The criteria is, Allah accepts only the repentance. The word in Arabic is innama. This is to express something to be inclusive. Only. Allah only accepts the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and foolishness and repent soon after. The condition is soon after. And you do, and you do a sin out of ignorance. Ignorance here means, it does not mean ignorance in the sense of ignorance. It means ignorance in the sense of foolishness and stupidity. That you can only be stupid and foolish when you commit a sin. The reason being is that you are not considering the repercussions of your actions in this dunya. If you, could, if you would consider the repercussions of your amal in this dunya, you would never commit sin. You know the repercussions will be destroyed here and the hereafter. So only per, that person is, so you only commit a sin out of stupidity when you do not consider the repercussions of this sin in the hereafter. Because if you consider the repercussions of a sin in the hereafter, you will never commit a sin. So out of stupidity and foolishness. And when does this happen? When the parda, when the curtain of ghafla, heedlessness falls on you. When the parda of heedlessness falls on you. When you become heedless. When you become heedless, you become foolish. When you become foolish, then you commit sin. So Allah says, you commit a sin deliberately or unintentionally. As soon as you do tawbah straight after you commit that sin, Allah will forgive. So if you delay the tawbah, so what is mafhum and makhalif here? What is the opposite meaning here? The opposite meaning is if you delay your tawbah, it is not incumbent upon Allah Rabbul Izzat to forgive you. Even though Allah, there is nothing incumbent upon Allah Rabbul Izzat. There is no haq, right, wajib upon Allah Rabbul Izzat. This is his minna. This is his ihsan. This is his favor. So if Allah forgives after a person commits a sin and he prolongs his tawbah, he prolongs his tawbah. If Allah wants, he can forget. If his rahmat supersedes and he forgives, there is no question. But the principle is that as soon as you commit, soon, you commit a sin and you realize somebody warns you, somebody informs you that you committed a sin, we do tawbah. The effect of ibadat is that you draw close to Allah. And a time comes where Allah gives you nur in the heart, light in the heart. Today we see that sometimes we cannot differentiate is this jais or najais, is this permissible or is this, is this not permissible, is this halal or is this haram, we cannot differentiate. You know why? We haven't experienced the nur of Allah in our heart. Once you experience that nur, this nur will assist you in informing you is this halal or haram, is this doubtful or not doubtful, it is the nur. So the effect of ibadah, we have to do so much ibadah. Read the, this is the month of the Quran. Read the Quran as much as you can. The, Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Tabarrak bil Quran fahuwa kharajamin. 
take benefit, take barakah, take blessing from the Quran because this is such a thing that has come out of Allah. Now if we were reading one page outside the month of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan we have to increase this. At least two pages. Whatever we can fit in our schedule. And sometimes we have to go outside our comfort zone. Allah Rabbul Izzat has changed the sunnah of the whole year. Shouldn't we change our sunnah? Sunnah means tariqah. Tariqah means your way of life. You understand in your thinking. Allah has changed his sunnah. Allah has changed the barakat, the blessings of this month of Ramadan and Barak compared to the Allah compared to the rest of the year. He has changed the format. He has changed the reward you will receive. Outside the month of Ramadan and Mubarak, you read you perform one farz. You will be rewarded for one far. You need you, you perform nafal prayer. You will only be rewarded. You will only be rewarded. The reward for a nafal prayer, not a farz. But in the month of Ramadan and Mubarak, you perform a nafal. You will be rewarded for a farz prayer, not one, not two, seventy. So Allah Rabbul Izzat has changed his sunnah in the month of Ramadan and Mubarak. His way, we should change our way as well. So outside the month of Ramadan and Barak, if we were rendering one page of the glorious Quran in the month of Ramadan, we should increase this two pages, three pages. So at the end of Ramadan and Mubarak, we at least read in one juz a day. And then we are consistent and diligent reading a juz. This is the purpose to inculcate the love of Allah Rabbul Izzat and then to maintain this until next Ramadan. Allah Rabbul Izzat give you me the tawfiq to implement and practice.